go, ladies and gentlemen. Our final session here at the Hawaiian Culture Beast uh, Conference. As a friendly reminder, we're going to ask you to mute our our microphones. And, of course, let's give our friends at Pai Pai Ohia and all the supporting staff an amazing round of applause as we introduce Kanaloa Bishop and his amazing staff and friends over at Pai Pai bringing all the Aina adventures and all the Aina education to all of us and all of our Kiki and Kumu and our Haumana. So we're really blessed to have them and share this space with them. And here we go. And turn over the microphone and the experience over to you, gentlemen. Take it away, guys. <laughs> All right. Aloha, Kako. Hee-hoo. We stay down here in Heia, yeah, at the Haleo Meheanu. Yeah, Haleo Meheanu. Haleo Meheanu is another word for this local ia. And it's probably our oldest mo'olelo that we have here, yeah. Can you guys all say Meheanu out there? Meheanu. All right, my kai. Yeah. So Meheanu is our mo'owahine here in Heia, yeah. And I have a feeling that Meheanu has been here long before us Kanaka was here, yeah. So when we talk about our mo'olelo of this aina, She's probably the first person that we're always going to introduce, yeah, Meheanu. Again, she's our mo'owahine, uh, and she helps us to, well, she helps us to keep in line, basically, yeah, but she also helps to establish Aina Momona here in Heia. Yeah, so our mo'owahine here in Heia, her name is Meheanu. All right. Now we're going to hear from Hi'ile Cavello. She's our executive director really quickly. Really quickly, aloha kako, hi'ile kavelo, kanaloa asked me to briefly introduce the organization's history to all of you. Um, so basically, in 2000, we started discussions with community and key individuals and stakeholders to establish Pai Pai. So our organization was founded in 2001. So this year, we celebrate 20 years of our org. So you guys can expect some bells and whistles coming out in the fall. Um, but but anyway, the organization's name, Pai Pai, means um, a foundation, yeah? But Pai Pai also means um, to stack stones. So it's specific to the setting of stones. Um, pai Pai Ohe'eya. So when we started the org in 2001, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to be and serve as a foundation for the community of He'eya. And since our organization was founded, all of our friends moved into the Ahupua'a. So we have Papahana Kuola, Pai Pai Ohe'eya, and Kako Oivi now um, within, within our Ahupua'a. But um, but just our vision, our mission is to implement the values and concepts from the model of a traditional loko ia, the Eia fish pond, uh, to provide physical, intellectual, and spiritual sustenance for our community. Um, and we do that through education primarily. Education kind of follows us and everything we do within our org. Um, we ourselves, as employees, constantly being educated by this place. Um, but also trying to expose our keiki and haumana um, of all ages to this lokoi'a so that they can also learn learn from this. Um, but yeah, that's our org. Stoked that you guys could join us today. So mahalo nui, handing it back over to our uh, education coordinator, Kanaloa Bishop. Right, Rajara. Thank you, Hi'ile. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at our, our map really quickly, yeah, so that so that we can kind of gauge where we are on this Honuan. Because I don't, I don't know if we're all from Hawaii, yeah, but it's in case some of us are not from Hawaii out there, thank you for joining us. But this is the island of Oahu, yeah? And this is north, south, over here, got the west side. And we stay over here in the moku of Ko'olau Poko. In this moku right here, Ko'olau Poko. And we in the Ahupua'a of He'eia. Yeah, so let's come a little bit closer. We stay right here in the Aupua of Heia at Haleo Meheanu. So you can get a good gauge of where we stay. Now we got this guy over here. Hopefully it's coming in. Not too glary for you guys. But this is our this is our bread basket, our umeke ai, so to speak. Yeah. If you look down here, this is the clay, obviously. This is an aerial photograph, a kind of modern one. But this is the Lokoi'a right here, yeah, Haleo Meheanu again. 
some residential areas. And then as we go up Mauka, so we can kind of guess, gauge where we're at on our Aina, then we come to this fruitful Aina Momona right here. And it's pretty glary, and I apologize, but this is where the guys called Kako Oivi at uh, their org. They're farming this area, opening up peril patches to feed us again. Right now, they're building one of the most epic koi mills that we're going to have in Hawaii. Maybe I wasn't supposed to say that. But anyway, big surprises from those guys. And then we go further up the Ahupua'a, we reach Papahanakua Ola and, and um, Huiku Mauliola, our other partners up Mauka. Yeah, just so we can get a gauge of where we're at. And hopefully I'm going to kind of point as we huakai around the local ia where the, the different videos and where the different people are, yeah? On the, on the kuapa over here, yeah? Okay. Now, I have a short video for you guys about the makaha. Okay, so I'm going to share a screen and we're going to learn about our makaha really quickly. So we cannot be at the Lohui and not at least talk about the makaha. And again, this is this is just my personal perspective on how makaha functions here at Eia, yeah, based off of my observations over the last five years that I've been here at this fish pond. Yeah. We latch our makaha using a two-finger spacing, yeah? Two fingers between each lao. We're not sure. We're still trying to learn, yeah? Kaike, onakutuna. We're still trying to figure this out. But we're going with two fingers right now. I kind of feel like that's kind of similar to maybe what our kupuna would have used too. So now let's think about this really quickly. Because the story that I remember is that um, fish come in, attracted to that vaihapakai, yeah, all that, all that mea ai for the ia is in the local ia. So they come in um, on a dropping tide, like like is what what's happening right now behind me. Now, if we talk about pua ama specifically, the baby mullet that we like to raise here at the local ia, those pua come in this big. They're like a few centimeters only, yeah. And you can imagine, it's really easy for us to come through if we're only two centimeters, two or three centimeters, yeah? But now let's think a little bit critically about the life cycle of the ama ama and how long does a fish take before he can't go back through the gate? Because what I used to understand is that the fish come in and they get too big and then they get trapped. When I ask students how fish ponds and how makaha work, they always use that word trapped. They eat a come in as pua. They come in, they eat, they eat, they eat. They get too big and then they trap. They're stuck. I don't know about that one. I actually don't think that's true. Partially true, but not really. Yeah. This is the way I see it actually happening. Yeah. The baby fish, the pua, are attracted to the local ia, and they come in and they actually have a few years before they're too big to go back out into the kai. And again, this is all based off of like, you know, the kind of principles that our kupuna used. We know that these, these animals exist in the kumulipo. Yeah. And once we know that, then we understand that our kupuna looked at these ia as, as kupuna, as ohana. So the trap part always kind of was an issue for me. Now, the fish actually have two years, two years with this spacing, with this two finger spacing for them to choose to either stay in the local ia or go back out into the kai. Some fish choose to leave right away, like the baby uhu. The baby uhu, we see baby uhu in the local ia. They're like this big. They come in in schools for a short period of time. They come in and they use this local ia. They eat and they eat and they eat. But shortly after they come, they also disappear. So the, the uhu has made a choice to go back out into the kai. So pua ama, however, we would encourage them to stay. How do we encourage ia to stay in the local? We remove predators, right? Kind of like the bully on the basketball field. Somebody's always picking on you. You're going to go play somewhere else. Same like our local ia. We need a safe local ia, yeah? So the fish choose to stay. What else do young people and young fish need? They need security. They need food, right? 
by mixing that fresh and salt water, we create that food for them, for the ia. So we keep the predators out, we make it safe. We have the vaihapakai, there's lots to eat. Now because the kuapa provides a level of protection against the ocean currents, it's also a gentle area, yeah? The fish pond is also mostly free of current and a, and a gentle space. Hopefully friendly for the baby fish to swim in. And the other thing that we can do here at the local uh, to encourage fish to stay is to oli, to hula, to sing, to pule. These are all extra ways that we can use to encourage our ia to choose to stay in the local. Some fish choose to stay and some fish choose to swim away. A hole hole is another species that we only see up until a certain size in an abundance. We see thousands of a hole hole, maybe hundreds. We see tons of a hole hole at this size. We rarely see a hole hole once they get shaka size. The hole hole choose to go back out in our lokoi'a. This is just my own kind of mana'o on this. There's big mullet that have never left this pond. There's big anai, yeah, we call those anai. And I have a feeling that these anai that are in this lokoi'a, they've been here for years, maybe even a decade, some of these large mullet, yeah? They've chosen to make this their home. Yeah. Another word for this lokoi'a is haleo meheanu. And we know that meheanu, one of her forms, is an anai. Yeah. And if this is the hale of meheanu, then this is a place where Anai love to live. And sometimes even when the gates break, the Anai stay. They don't leave. It's my own observations of this place, yeah. I don't know, though. I, I can't say for certain because I cannot be like, ooh, that's the fish. I see that same fish every day. I have a sneaky feeling that some of these Anai choose to stay in the Lokoi'a for life. Yeah, They're lifelong fish pond fish. So that's a little bit of how the makaha work. More, it's to keep the large predators in the kai. The other ia will make the decision. All the other ia that come off of the kai into the local ia, they either choose to stay or they choose to leave. And this is the design of our gate uh, that we use, that we, we base off of what we think our kupuna used, yeah? And so this is the mentality that I use for our educational programming. And I'll get into that in a minute. All right, Genge. One more thing I got for you guys right here. So like I said, yeah, this is how I kind of base my educational programming off of that, that makaha concept, yeah, where the fish kind of choose to come to the local ia, meaning the students. And whatever is their desire, really, when they get here, yeah? Either they like it here and they're going to come learn a little bit more and hang out for a while. Or potentially they're going to go somewhere else and learn something else, yeah? And that's a, that's a traditional value for sure. Uh, my mother comes from a, a heavy hula family, yeah? And when she was young, she was kind of pressured to be a hula dancer. But she didn't want to be a hula dancer. She wanted to be an artist. And now my, my mom is a renowned artist. And so we let the students, we let the, the young ones choose what they like to do. Yeah, and we just nurture them the whole way along. And so this picture that I'm showing with you guys right now, this guy right here standing next to me, not the, not the, the little guy, but the bigger guy, his name is Bronson Azama. Last year, he graduated from Castle High School. And I created what's called an Anai Award for Bronson. Because like I said in, in my video really quickly, some Anai don't leave this local ia. And Bronson exhibited this throughout his high school career at Castle High School. He would come to our work days religiously. He would come and support us at any time we asked him. And we know, and from that behavior, I know that he's, he's committed to this local ia and to our aina for life. Like the anai are committed to the local ia. So this is Bronson Azama. I also made him a shovel out of mangrove. It's kind of heavy. Uh, probably didn't work that well, but that's his award. Super epic, Brada. If you don't, if you don't recognize him, you will. 
Right on, Branson. I hope you're out there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to send you guys out to the Makaha. We're going to go out to Kihimanu. So on the map here, and I cannot see my screen, so. Kaleo, I looking good, Kaleo? We're going out here to this Makaha right here, Hihimanu. Turn camera on. There we go. How about that's that? The, that's <laughs> the one. Handsome, stop buddy. Sharing. That's the yeah, one. Stop sharing and turn camera on. <laughs> you saw the picture? Everything? Okay, cool. Yeah. So we're going to send you out to the Makaha. Again, this is the local, uh, yeah. My, our office is right over here, just so we ga gauging. We're going across the Lokoia to our first makaha called Hihi Manu. I'm going to wave the flag because this is one tradition or the kind signal, yeah? signal practices. I'm going to wave the flag and send the signal out. Hopefully that worked. Sure. Sure. Can you guys hear? All right, awesome. Um, just bear with me for one second. I'm gonna, we're gonna do something never before attempted by us anyway. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go to Hi'ile. She's got a GoPro on the end of a stick. All right, can you guys see the uh, the Makaha? Hi, hi. Awesome, okay, go. We go underwater. Can you guys see the makaha? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, try go down again. Mean underwater. We're there, friend. Go a little forward, there's fish swimming into the makaha. There's to'ao, imanini. There's to'ao like right next to them. They're swimming up current, so the tide is coming in, and the fish are trying to swim against the current yeah. towards the makaha. Yep, perfect. So those kind of brownish ones in the background are to'ao, predator fish that we try to get out of the pond sometimes. Oh, Hile, you want to look and try to identify? Sure. What's that? Kala? That is a tilapia, That's gang. Tilapia, Invasive. Oh, and then the small little guys under the tilapia, and we call tilapias tilaps. Small guys are pualu. They're kind of dark blackish color with white rings on their tails. And then I saw manini. Affectionately, we refer to them as maniners. Maniners. Yeah, and these are all like, these are all pua. Yeah, pua of those species. And so that's a, right, estuary, super important for um, the juvenile habitat of these guys. There's kupipi in there. Yeah. They're kind of oinkers of the sea, the kupipi with the black spot on the tail. Um, yeah, you see the tilapia in the background. I'm going to point it towards oh, the makaha. Oh, yeah, here's the, the, here's the makaha, yeah. It's right there. So what are they doing? They're, they are, um, the, the, the tide is still rising slightly, ever so slightly. And so they're all kind of loving that, yeah, oxygenated water, clean seawater coming in the local, uh, and it looks like they're feeding, right? The manini, that's what they eat. They eat off the turf, the turf algae that grows on the pohaku, on the benthos. Sorry, I spit on you. <laughs> that's a mangrove seedling. Bad. Pull it out when you see that in the ocean, guys. But yeah, look at it. You guys got, you guys got a good day today. Nice and clear, the water. If we were at one of the other makahas, we might see the bigger, the bigger guys. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can pull it out. You gotta come to the local here if you like see the big guys though. Yeah. Just to really quickly introduce uh, myself, I'm Fred Rapoon. I work for the Heia National Estuarine Research Reserve. So um, we're kind of like a, a hui of, of organizations, including Kako'o Iwi, 
Pai Pai Ohe'eia and the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology located out on Moku Oloe or Coconut Island. And so we're really here. I mean, these guys were all here before the reserve was created, but they kind of called for it to be established so that we can help coordinate among all the different uh, efforts going on. And so um, that's what we do. And I just want to say a shout out to the HIMB education crew, Mark Heckman and Leon. They helped us to put together this ability to do the Zoom from underwater or do the uh, live stream from underwater. So um, super cool collaborating with them. I'm going to hand it over to Mamo in a second. There you go. Oh, that's not Mamo. That's Hile. Oh, how you to flip the screen. Flip it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. How's this? Eh, my Coco. Um, um, uh, Kahoe lawa o kahoe nui iuka a ua noho o pahu lawa o loe i kai o he eia. Um, iuka ua malama o kahoe i na mala o na ai like ole a ua ho makau kau ia ka ai i loko o kona imu iuka. Um, a pelano lako i malama ke kahi i ke kahi a i kai ua malama o pahu i kalawai a a i ke kahi la ua hele o pahu i kalawai a. A he kule ana ko ke ia o hana, o e ho i ka mālama ana ke kahi i ke kahi, a me ka hanai ana ke kahi i ke kahi. Me ke lā, ke ka ana like ana. Um, ua hele o pahu i ka lawaia i ke kahi lā, a iaia e lawaia ana ua ho lei upena o ia maluna o ke kahi mau ia like ole, ke kahi mau ia ono loa, a ke kahi mau ia a ole ono loa. Um, iaia e huki ana ina ia mai ka upena i ke o loe, u, ono ke lā mau ia no laila, Ya loe i piia e iuka e ai i ka aina ahi ahi noho noho oia e ono ana ka ai oia po. A i kono hoea ana ua ike oia a o ua nele ka imu i ke la mau ia ono. No laila ua, ua hana pi o pahu a ua mālama oia i na ia nona iho a ole oia i ka ana like me ka o hana. No laila mamu, mamuli o po pahu hana pi ua ho o maka a o loe a me ka hoe e hana pi a ua pi i ka huhu no laila ua ho ne e o ka hoe. I kona imu iuka, a uh, i ka pii ana o ka uahi mai kona imu iuka, um, a ole i ike ike lea o e ai ano li kohu li ike me na ao. No laila iaia e pii ana kona uahi iuka, a ole o pahu i ike, ua ho o makau kau ai ole ua makau kau ka ai. No laila ia pahu e pii ana iuka, ua pau ka ai, a ohe ai nona. No laila ho o maka oia e pololi, a ho o maka lako a pau e pololi, ma muli o ko pahu hana pii. Ua hana pi ke kahi ea e, a ho o mau ka hana pi no laila. Ua haule ke kahi mai maluna o ka ahu pua a o e ho i ka mai vi. A ole i lava ka ai no lako, a ahiki i ko lako mālama ana ke kahi i ke kahi. A laila ua ho i mai ka ai a lako. A ka i ke ea mau la ola ke la mau i noa, a me ke la mau wahi pana. A punio mako no ka mea o ke lako mako kahua makaloko i a. O ke kahua mamua mahope ke kukulu. Ua kupulu ia ke ia loko ia maluna o ke ia kahua o na wahipana um, o he eia. O ia i ua loa mai na lako e kupulu i ka loko ia mai ke ia mau wahipana o ke ia mau wahipana na um, ke kahua o ka loko ia. I kike hai hou na, na inoa o na wahipana. Laila, o ka wahipana o ke ahia ka hoi o ke ia puu nei um, o ka maa mau Aya na ao iuka a uh, o kela ka, um, ka uahi mai ka imu a ka hoe. Alaila i kai, 
aia o pu'u pahu ko poke loa i kai a ma kona ao ao loa ka moku puni ka moku o no e ia ka ohana i noho mahe e ia a wa o lako pehe e malama mai ka i ke kahi i ke kahi a ma hop ma mhope o ka ka haule ana o ke la ma i tihi maluna o lako a leila ho mana o mako e ki e maumo o lelo a i ho mana o mako ko mako kule ana o ka malama ana i I think so. That was so epic, Mamo. Mahalo Nui no Kela Mo Olelo. Yeah. We live in our language. Yeah. Language really is the key to everything. All right. So let's try to jump back. Anyway, I would switch my photos really quickly. The first photo is more modern. This is a photo from 1928. Yeah. This is another aerial shot. Of that umeke ai again. This is that large agricultural zone that's now being revamped by the Kako Oivi crew. Yeah, and then our local ia down here. But you look in 1928, how much food production was happening on our aina? Acres and acres. Some of this might be rice by this time, but before it was rice, it was definitely loikalo, loikalo and loko ia. Okay, so we're gonna walk a little bit further around. We was over here at Hihimanu. Now I'm going to show you a short video of Keli'i, and he's going to talk about Aino Momona, yeah? And he's standing on this side of the loko ia. Hopefully you can see this. We call this area the corner. This is where the kai meets the vai. This is where the kahavai comes down and empties into the kai. And so super epic zone for us, and Keli'i is going to tell you all about it. <laughs> Aloha, Mike Ako. My name is Keli'i Kotubete. Uh, and I'm blessed to work here with Pai Pai Oheia at Heia Lokoi'a. Our noted historian, Samuel Manaya Kalani Kamakau, um, in 1869, he wrote that um, Lokoi'a were things that beautified our land, and a land with many Lokoi'a was considered Aina Momona. Um, so, kind of thinking about that, the fact that our kupuna knew that Lokoi'a were such treasures um, and places of momona and places of production and fertility. We, we as, a, as, a, as a hui here, not only at the Lokoi'a, but across our entire Ahupua'a, we're all working to achieve momona. Um, and a big part of that is vai. A big part of that, that connection for all of us here in the Ahupua'a is vai. We're further up in the, in the mountain section, in the uka, we have Papahana Kuaola and Uiku Maoliola. Um, they're two of our really good partners that are doing excellent work, um, doing reforestation, returning some of those lands up there to Lo'i um, into production, and moving further down into Heia wetland to our Kula lands, we have Kako Oivi, and they're doing amazing work as well too, not only educating, but really working to heal the Aina, all of the, the runoff that's happening um, from our upland sections and our residential areas. Do, doing a lot of healing work in the wetland to bring back food production and bring back just ola um, in the wetland. And as all of that fresh water flows through these places of restoration and revitalization, eventually it ends up here coming underneath Kamehameha Highway Bridge and flowing both into our Lokoi'a and outside the Lokoi'a along Heia stream here and exiting out to our kai at our Muliwai. All of these areas that I've just named are areas that are in a state of restoration and revitalization. But again, the vai is what connects us. And with that vai coming down, um, you know, vai is, is, I've heard this in several places and it, it's so important to us here in Heia and it makes a lot of sense. Vai is a conduit for mana and vai is a conduit for aloha. So we know that all of the amazing work that our, our good friends are doing on the Aina up there and all of the volunteers and the keiki and just that intention, that, that purposeful addition of mana to the water, it flows down here and it really has an impact on the productivity here of here at our local Ia. Our kupuna have, have several turns for brackish water of which we have inside our local Ia. We have vaikai, vaihapakai, but one word that I like to um, promote and perpetuate is Vaimomona. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Our kupuna never had uh, microscopes, but they knew that this water was extremely critical and necessary 
important to the health and the well-being of our ecosystems here in the Kai, here in our Lokoi'a, and even moving up into the stream, um, into the lower reaches of the stream. Our Vaimomona is the, that's the fuel. That's the fuel for our Lokoi'a. And it fuels Papa'i, fuels I'a, Limu, Puhi, all the different types of um, oysters and, and limpets that we have growing around um, on the pohaku of our lokoi'a, clams as well, um, opai, all of these, all of these food, um, all of these meola in one way or another are food for another species and all of these relationships and interactions that are happening all are founded on vaimomona. As that brackish water mixes and, 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 um, and blends with our kai here, our pua, which are the beginning of, of life, our pua, this, this time of year is pua ama, our, our Hawaiian striped mullet, our pua are attracted and they love, they love that vaimomona because in that vaimomona is plankton. And that plankton, again, is that foundation, it's, it's, it's the bottom of the food chain and it's what supports all the life above it. Our kupuna didn't have microscopes again, but they did have an amazingly keen and trained eye. And they knew that these lokoia were going to be most productive in areas where we have vaimomona, brackish water, um, lots of plankton blooming in the water. These pua, they, they come up into the muliwai. They come in through our makaha. Um, that's why the, the gates of our lokoia are, are built as such, so the pua can swim through. They come inside our lokoia and they're welcomed into this puhonua, if you will. They're welcomed into this place of safety and comfort and abundance of food. Again, the vai momona is not vai that we partake of, but it's vai for all of our all of our pua, all the babies, all those all those little guys that we want to cultivate and grow and malama and take care of. We want them to grow to bigger sizes, not necessarily for our consumption but so they can be a part of a healthy ecosystem. We know without a shadow of a doubt, because our kupuna left it for us, that our Hawaiian systems of agriculture on land and our Hawaiian aquaculture systems benefit and enhance our native ecosystems. Yeah. So our, our Hawaii was just fine before people came, but when our kupuna came here, they actually enhanced the productivity. And the work that we're doing today here at Paipaio Heia and across the Pai Aina with all of our other hui of Lokoi'a, um, Kia Iloko, we are all trying to trying to work and uh, work towards continuing that foundation laid by our kupuna. Um, the ia that we have in our pond and that we we are actively trying to raise, um, these are our ama ama, it's the Hawaiian straight mullet. We are trying to raise ava, uh, pualu, palani, kala, all our surgeon fishes, the limu eaters. And the guys that eat off the bottom. So while we do have our herbivores in the pond, we also have um, fish that eat other things um, like papai and opai. So that would be our moi, our oio, our veke. Um, and we do have predators in our pond and it's okay to have some in there. That's the papio, the kaku. We have some introduced guys like the to'au. And they're edible as well too, but we just try to keep their numbers low. Just wanted to, to end with... Uh, yeah, kind of bringing those two ideas together that fish ponds were things that beautified the land and fish ponds being a reflection of the health of an ahupua'a um, and the entire ecosystem. It just makes a whole lot of sense and we're really proud of not only our work, but the work being done statewide by many places, um, doing Aina work, doing work in the kai, work in, in our muliwai. It really makes sense that as we as we put our hands into these places and we bring kids, we teach them lessons about Aloha Aina, we teach them lessons, simple lashing, how to reuse and repurpose invasive trees and reuse them for native applications. As we infuse this educational sustenance and we put that together with physical sustenance, all while restoring an entire aqua, I think we're getting to a point where our kupuna not only are going to be proud of us, and continue to be proud of our keiki. Um, but we're also getting to a place where we are seriously improving our food security, food security here in Hawaii, and improving the fact that we're building a Hawaii that we want. Yeah, Not a Hawaii that has been uh, set for us or destined for us um, because of 
other economic models. Um, we're building a Hawaii that makes the most sense for us Hawaiians who are living here today. What we want to do, having um, we're exercising our we're exercising power over our spaces and making sure that yeah, what we leave for our keiki, the lessons we leave for our keiki, the spaces we leave for our keiki are going to be something that our kupuna are proud of. Um, so, mahalo nui. I really appreciate it and uh, aloha. Okay, Roger that. Oh, that was Kaylee. Yeah, with Aina Momona and talking about vai and connections and making our Aina more rich. Yeah, we're gonna move a little bit further. Yeah, and if I got it, if we're telling them all hello of this local yeah in this time right now, it's it's heavily in, in terms of restoration. Yeah, the the pond has been in heavy restoration since we've been here as an organization, and we have a few more years left of it. But I cannot tell you that story. That's a story for Kiahi PEO here to tell us. So let's hear from him now. Here on our caretaker's roadside, it's a, the last section of a full bar that, that won't be backed up against the item. Right? The last few bar is a bar that has been a wall. And as for the trees, uh, about two more acres, three more oh, acres of mango standing. So so about a nice 500 foot shot of wall that needs to get put back in. Alright, we're going well, well, what our crew does, go for bar. Says it in the name. Let the wall stand again. Um, a lot easier said than done, though. Over the past nine, nine years that I've been here, the main way we've done it was with people. Yeah, on our hands. And I think through those years, we've instilled in people that um, we can make differences in our community. And I think for everybody watching this, um, though you have that power, yeah, we've got to learn that, that we have this power in taking forests of mangrove and creating this, this place that not only physically resembles a local yaw, but spiritually, mentally. Yeah everything we have within us to try try be Kiai, try be Wahi, try be the people that actually do the job and do the practice. Yeah. Um, about two, three years ago, we are having 200 people a week um, come in here and, and change the face of this, this place, leave their footsteps in the dirt. As we all know, one year ago, almost a day, um, COVID kind of changed our lives. Which, which brought a few things really to, to my mind in the form of restoration. Um, and even though the, the team shrunk, the mentality is there. Anything is possible. We came into this area in February of last year. We've been in this area for one year. Um, we cleared over an acre. We build wall, we cross, we borrow. We're doing things that are kumuna, like the stories we read. It says 10,000 people would do that. Yeah, today, the only thing 10,000 people do is go to football games. Yeah, we go to concerts. Yeah, that's why 10,000 people show up. Yeah, 10,000 people no longer show up to a Baha'i. And I think that's a big thing we're missing. We can talk about restoring a place. The physical hana of that is a lot different. And for here at the local, this this local year in particular, uh, we really chose it to go the route by hand. Yeah, and there's many ways to go about it. Um, but I think, if anything, in, in the, this practice of restoration, we take, take pride in how many hands have touched this place. How many minds have changed, how many keikis, how many kupunas, how many makuas have come and even maybe taking that story home. Yeah. So I hope in this short time, you know, you take take a story of of a few people over the course of this year during COVID, really putting their heads down and really trying to keep the progression to, to, to let people know do that. You're not gonna stop. Our people are dealt with worse things than this. Yeah? In their own time, they know it worse things. You're not gonna stop doing this. Yeah? Because we are on the home stretch. Yeah? So it's a feeling that for this local year, 
there will be a new chapter. You know, rest, it won't be the heavy restoration that like you might have come to visit. You know, we'll have another good year of this. You know, but then, I, then I think the fun begins. Then we get to dial down the systems that we get to talk about, yeah, that we get to share with you. Then we start living the systems. You know, for all of you guys who've been here for me, Rocks with us, you guys know of the progress, but the main thing was to show it, yeah. To show us the blueprint that our kukuna left behind. The awesome thing is we know some of the kukunas that walked on this road. There's a lot of kukunas we don't know that walked on this road. But the one thing we do know is we would still be walking on this road in authority. Every time we set up a walk through, every time we clean up an area, we're doing that so that the next generation don't have to. So maybe some maintenance, but you know, we put a walk through into the world. Putting all our all our mana and all of our intention to last forever. And one of the beauties about this place, and we've always known that fish ponds are generational. All the things that we put up did were generational. They weren't for them in the time, they were for us. You know, we're still learning, but it's been a fun process. Not looking forward to the last day of the mangrove is down, but all good. How is Kiahi? So epic, yeah. All right. So I forgot to um, tell you guys where in that local yeah, he is sitting, yeah. Yeah, he is sitting right in this area back here. This is called what we call Caretakers Road area. And this is where the restoration's been. And not many people have been able to come help us with this large mangrove forest that grew right after this picture was taken. But we wanted to show you that area anyways, yeah, virtually. And hopefully you guys, you know, maybe we open up and we can actually get to do some hunting back in that space. Yeah. One thing I want to point out really quickly before we go on to the next video is that there was an awai here at this local uh, yeah, that took water from the, the vai, from the kahavai across the backside of the local uh, so that it would provide fresh water to this side of the fish pond. This, this no longer exists right now, but in the videos, you're going to see this area. Yeah, we're, I'm going to share a video of Pehi playing some music in a minute. And he's playing right in the spot where the Awai would have been. So just to get a sense of where we are again at the Lokuia, we're on the backside with Kiahi near the highway. We call that Caretaker's Road. What he said, a couple more acres of mangrove to cut down and 200 feet of wall to build. I get um, Kiahi on one more video. Um, on this old picture, 1929, you're going to notice little structures out here. At the Makaha. 1929, there were Halekia'i. These are Halekia'i at the different Makaha. We, we are familiar with that word a little bit, yeah? Kia'i. It's been in the news a little bit. If you guys hear, heard of the Ku Kia'i Mauna movement, we're becoming familiar with this term, yeah? And so I have a little video that talks about our Halekia'i here at the Lokoi'a. If you ever been to our Lokoi'a at, at Hey, uh, one thing you'll take notice of is, is the Hale Kia'i. And we just added a newest addition at our Y3 Makaha. Um, the, the Hales themselves, they have, they have functional purpose. Um, they have historical purpose. Um, and they have definitely have a spiritual and a, a very mental side of them as well. Um, historically, Hale Kia'i were present at Lokoi'a. Um, Serving the same purpose they can physically today for for shelter um, from the rain, the wind, and the sun. Um, a place to allow you to be in areas for an extended amount of time to really kilo and to really see what those spaces have to offer because the makahas themselves have so much life in them. Um, it's always a place you want to find yourself spending time there to, to really see how the, the, the ha of this lokoia works. Um, mentally and spiritually, it's it's this connection to Aina. It's this form of Ike Kupuna, which allows us to to not just call on Hardware Hawaii, Yamashiro's, Wayne's Lumber, and places like that to build our hales, um, traditional and the ones we live in, but. Actually, being able to use a resource that's that's invasive, that's being cut down, that 
some people look as rubbish and some people really do truly care about that this this plant mangrove and um like it's used around the world we try at Heya fish pond to use it for many reasons for makahas for hales for for fence posts which we've been giving out for emu wood and you know even to makahiki implements have been made out of the mangrove from our fish pond so there's there's pride and and assurance that reusing this this wood you know we we're, we're we're building a relationship with aina and maybe some people see it as an invasive species but we're seeing it as our our lao our our trees that we use are no longer that easy to harvest and they're no longer that heavy resource our kupuna did because right now we're just trying to save them where where mangrove is something that's being cut down and and what what a way to use it besides building a halekia at a local ia that you spend days on there and the stories of those la'au, those poles, those pohana and those po kihis and the olokea and the lohelao and the ahopueos. They all have a story to them, how they got into that hale and, and been working at Pai Pai. Um, it's been awesome to, to see the stories unfold and see the hales that are built. Really, really relying on our space to, to, to provide the things we need and not always having to go out into the, to the greater world and find the things that we need when, when a lot of the stuff is right at our doorsteps. And we, we're taking advantage of that here at Heia Fish Pond. Um, I th the awesome thing about Hales is th those have been the gathering places for children, for, for groups, for schools, for kupuna. Um, to really take a step back in time, you know, and look at the thatching and look at the mayao that we do, that we take pride in and, you know, also to be a comfortable space. And there's always good reminders of when our hales need to be rethashed and fixed um, when, when you go under them. So, you know, we're always learning. We're always going to get better. And... You know, we hope to see Hale's around and Hale's to be a regular thing in the future, not something that's that's only seen um, in these few kipuka that we have around our islands. Into the next one, this is um Pehi and he gonna close us out. Oh man. We've been fortunate that we could be at the fish pond. We can still come down here and do the hana and malama as much as we can. Although, I must admit, we do miss all the keiki, all the schools, all the volunteers, um, all the kumu that come with the keiki. So I used to be a kumu back in the day, and so I want to dedicate this one to all the keiki. And I know still doing online education and all the kumu. I'm feeling about kumu are going into a whole new phase of getting ready for the unknown. Schools are going to be... So I've heard some schools are going online next year after summer and how to prepare for that and do all the hana to get ready so that our kiki can, can still learn and still still flourish and dedicate this wayata. It's another one from Aotearoa. Old 90s music um, from a band called Ngaho Taito. Sings about supporting the Maori language movement. Uh, Kia me kore e ngaro te reo Māori Nga u te roudo, nga ku te roudo Ki a ora a na Nga māti a ahakoa Te rahi te iti dane He ori te Te mana o te koha e Noreira, Noreira, Enga mana, Enga reo, 
てねてみひやつかまりぎてアロハふわたいまいこときてあみなてこはなでなうてろうなくてろうるきやおらあえていうねきやまなきちやあはこはてらひていちだねへおりてでまなおてこはえどれいらどれいらへがまなえがれをてねてみひやつきゃまりにてあろはふわたいまいこときてあふいなてこはがれアウトルクムースケコイトゥンアパワコケカハタマリキマケカハマツマティナタツイパツケガンギオサバレワンラスレッスンヘペペアコカイアヤヘペペアコカイア And so when we know that fish have ears we sing because they love it ヘペペアコカイア Mahalo 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 Here's the rest of my team over here Yee I don't know what we up to now. We're in beach, I think. I just wanna, I wanna send a huge mahalo out to all the ohana on the pai pai over here. Everybody, let's give them a real a round of applause and a huge mahalo. What an amazing hokai they provided for us in such in this distant learning time, and what an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am to share this space with us. We are so, so blessed and blown away. To the underwater videos by Bossy Ile showing the get the name, you know. I can't, I'm just blown away. Auto Ohana and Pai Pai again. Mahalo for participating with us. Mahalo for spending the time with us. You guys are absolutely amazing. Un, no words can express our gratitude today. And for those of us that have stuck around and had the amazing melee to end our, our period, what more than can be said about the amazing crew and staff down in Pai Pai Oheya? Check out their website, gang. Check out their volunteer list right now. They have some, some stuff going on, but I'm sure in the next few months, they're going to make it happen. Again, mahalo to the gang down in Kaneohe. You guys are the bomb. And for those of you guys that have stuck around, we have an amazing closing keynote with the Daughters of Maui.